it's time for The Clash. Now, from drug scandals to drunken fights with photographers, Prince Harry has always given William plenty of reasons to be angry with him. But I have to say, the catatonic rage the heir to the throne has felt since the publication of Harry's malicious memoir, Spare, which was effectively a cruel character assassination of his older brother, is said to pale in comparison. And yet this is the tinderbox environment in which King Charles expects his warring sons to reunite in front of billions at his historic coronation just three months away. So as I've written in a new column for the Mail Online tonight, if Charles is determined to have the Sussexes at the coronation, in my view, an unwise decision that will overshadow the event, it's now up to the king to protect his eldest son by insulating him from any forced conversation, either in public or private. Charles's diplomatic but naive decision may not be a popular one with members of the royal family, after sources told the Mail on Sunday that everyone is on edge about the Sussexes' mooted attendance, with one declaring they should realise that there is only one subject that many members of the royal family will be willing to discuss, and that's the weather. But what do you think? Does King Charles have a responsibility to protect Prince William from Harry at the coronation? Let me know what you think by emailing dan at gbnews.uk or voting in our poll at GB News on Twitter. But joining me to debate this now, Associate Editor of The Daily Mirror, a staunch Republican, Kevin Maguire, Editor-in-Chief of Majesty Magazine, Ingrid Stewart, and the Royal Commentator, <laughs> Richard Fitzwilliams. So, Richard, do you agree with me here? If Charles is... Really foolish enough, and I, I mean that, foolish enough to want Harry and Meghan to be at the coronation, then he's actually going to have to provide some protection for William and Kate too, but especially William, who feels utterly livid, livid with Harry's behaviour so far this oh, year. Well, uh, well, he has, well, he might, but I see it in a slightly different way because, you see, what I think is going to happen, I do think they're going to be invited. I'm not saying I am absolutely dying to see them there. That is a different matter. <laughs> On the other hand, when they actually get there, as we saw very clearly with the Platinum uh, Jubilee celebrations, they attended one event publicly, and that was the Thanksgiving service at St. Paul's. We know they were tripping the colour, but that was more or less it. They were controlled, and that the Queen's funeral, well, the appearances were dignified. When they actually get there, if they get there remembering his Archie's birthday, of course, but I think because of their contract, certainly they'll want to appear. I don't have a concern that they're going to be in any sense overshadowing the event. My concern is going to be the, uh, the way they behave in the weeks and months up to it. It's not that long to go. No. We know we saw from the of course, of they're the already speech. making this all about them, the negotiations with Justin Welby, who is totally on the side of the Sussexes. I mean, Ingrid Stewart, I, I think we do have to be concerned about Harry and Meghan overshadowing the festivities of the coronation, the formal festivities. And William is worried that they might try some sort of publicity stunt while they're here. So isn't it actually Charles's responsibility to say, if you come, these are the rules, you have to behave and you stay the hell away from William and Kate? Well, I think that... If Charles had anything to do with the upbringing of his children, which he did, they, Harry would know perfectly well without having to be told that that is the deal. But, Dan, I don't think that Harry is nearly as brave as everyone thinks he is. He's physically very brave, but he's not mentally brave. And I think he, he wouldn't even begin to know how to disrupt something as serious as a coronation ceremony when the whole world or the world that wants to watch is actually looking out. And I, I also don't think he's going to say anything disrespectful in the, in the months leading up to the ceremony because it, it doesn't benefit him. Okay, Harry's all about him. It will not benefit him any way at all to make a fuss or to behave badly. And I also think, he, he which I've said before, he needs the stardust of this royal event to fall on his shoulders to um, make his way in America easier. At the moment, he's not nearly as popular in America as he was before he published Bear, and nor is Meghan. And Harry needs to look good, and I think by behaving himself at the coronation, keeping quiet, a bit like he did at the Jubilee with Meghan, I think that will earn him some brownie points. Nothing else will. 
Kevin, do you think the king has a duty to protect William from Harry? Dan, short of streaking around the cathedral or nicking the crown just before it's put on his dad's head, I cannot see how he can overshadow a coronation. Really? Why does William really need protecting? He's 40. He's got to put on his big boy pants. He's got to look after himself now. He's got to answer some of the charges from his brother, whether it's physically assaulting him, uh, ripping his necklace, whatever it is, uh, because that dignified silence uh, feels a bit, at times, like shame and guilt. I think Ingrid's right. I don't. I don't. I think Harry is physically brave, but he's not reckless. So he's not going to go along and create a, a real hullabaloo and and trouble. But I agree. I agree with Richard. What he does before and after may be a bit of a problem for this family, but it just shows you, I think, the nonsense of elevating one family above all others and somehow pretending it is special when it is not other than the entitlement it has and the privileges. So well, of course, the vast majority of the British public still agree. And in fact, the support for the monarchy has gone up uh, since Harry and Meghan's ridiculous antics. But Ingrid, is that really fair for Kevin to say, oh, William just has to grow up? The reality is that William has grown up and that's why he has kept the dignified silence. Ingrid, there's so many things, so many things that the Prince of Wales could say about his younger brother, which would damn him, which would actually finish him off altogether. But William is not going to do it because he's been the bigger man. And I actually think it's really irresponsible for Charles to then put him in a position where he has to play out a lie in front of billions around the world. Well, I don't think he does have to play out a lie. He he can look at his brother. He can look right through his brother. He's pretty good at that. All the royals are. And um, he can, you know, put on a smile, but he doesn't actually have to talk to him because we won't witness that. Um, well, he never wants to talk to him again, Richard Fitzwilliams. I mean, what I'm being told, Richard, I don't know if you're hearing the same thing, but I'm being told... William never wants to speak to Harry again. I mean, this is not just a fallout uh, that can be papered over like previously after the Oprah interview. Spare was a declaration of war against William. Oh, I think we're all absolutely agreed that an attack which began in early September led up to the Netflix series was a brief truce for Christmas and then subsequently with Spare and all those interviews. It's precisely what it was, a declaration of war. But the only way you handle war, if you can't fight back, and the royals obviously can't do a point by point for a battle, the only way you handle it is to control it. And my feeling is, and I agree with what Ingrid says, the way he'll be controlled controlled and what he needs because, I mean, quite frankly, she made the point about the royals, uh, the um, Sussexes in America. Now, if the latest Newsweek poll is right, and I hope it is, 45 points Harry has fallen since Spare and yeah. also made... Yeah, Kevin, Kevin, actually, attacking the royals isn't a good strategy. Attacking the royals just makes the royals more popular. Yeah, mate, He's actually fire. a bad oh. Republican, Harry. He's a bad Republican. He does damage the cause. He's a bit like <laughs> Nicola Sturgeon in yeah. Scotland. He's bad for the monarchy, just like she's bad for independence. Yeah, let's just, let's just wait and see before we jump to that conclusion. But it may, I, you know, I agree, it may have backfired on Harry and Meghan, mm -hmm. although... Ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. They're made for life now. Yeah. They can live in their big house. Well, they're made for their... life, but they have zero reputation. They've got less. There's, there's part mm -hmm. of the country that uh, in the UK, which is the most important area, then probably the Commonwealth, the US, uh, after after that. But they yeah. they still yeah. have zero a reputation. Oh, and by the way, uh, that little factor of losing your brother for the rest of your life, it's not worth That's, the millions. It's yeah. not worth uh, the millions. Right, right. That is the bit. Wherever you think of the monarchy, you also just yeah, look yeah, yeah. on the family. It's very dysfunctional. It's just a it's yeah. shameless servants. We know, we can see it, uh, how they're, they're, there's a lot of pies in there. And that, I would have thought, Harry will at some point regret. Well, he will. Publicly. He will. And it was his fault. It was his fault, uh, well and truly, which is why I think Charles needs to protect him. But fascinating debate. Thank you all. Kev